So when I came out to walk Ellie this morning, all the cows were laying down at the far end of the big field. Mm -hmm. And I called for them. You know me. Well, actually, no, I didn't do that for a time. The siren song of the dairy mate. Yeah, so this time I just said, good morning cows, milking time. And heads pivoted. And I was only like here, right? Is it footage of this? No, <laughs> I was walking the dog. Maybe it didn't happen. <laughs> So, so I'm calling in the cows a couple of times, and then Dulcie sees me, and she stands up and starts doing her stretching thing. And um, I'm still out here with Ellie, and and then some other cows start getting up. So I, I more enthusiastically called, <laughs> and then they all got up and started coming this way. It's nice when that happens. It is, but. It, you know, I was thinking about the amount of time that is being spent collecting so, cows who are reluctant to come into milking. It, or, or those times when you do have to go out and collect them, and then they're all just laying there, like I you know. know, you know, <laughs> they, 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 no they, explaining cows because when they let themselves in to the barn, it's always at a weird hour, and and and, and is unexpected. Um, so what I'm wondering is. Can we train them to a sound? You know, like, because we've got these beautiful, those beautiful um, uh, bells that we got at however many years ago now. Long time at ago. That, at that sale, which are, I know where they are even. Um, you know, what if we hung them up on the barn? And, I mean, can you Pavlovian train <laughs> a cow? We I, could try. I mean, we Pavlovian, Pavlovian trained Ellie to know that when I come out of the creamery and the she, bell on the and creamery she hears door, the creamery door, so she knows. Coming home. Yeah. Uh, to the house. Yeah, <laughs> I know. The cows. Well, it's certainly worth a try. <laughs> anyway, welcome <laughs> to episode two of The Farmer and the Cheesemaker. I'm Neil. And this is our power breakfast on this beautiful fall day. Oh, it's gorgeous today after two inches, well, more than two inches of rain, probably more like five inches of rain our a couple days ago. Weather, or water, rain gauge isn't yeah, accurately reflecting things. Yeah, we need to look it's into calibrating it. Level, anyway, yeah, there was a lot of rain. A lot of rain, blowing. too much rain. <laughs> yeah, we don't want any. Well, we want We're already it. saturated after a summer of rain, so anyway. we don't need more. So, yeah. what did you do this week? Uh, I can't remember. It's been a jam-packed week. Um, we, we took pigs to slaughter on Wednesday, which meant we tried loading them on Tuesday. I thought we had to take six. I'm pretty sure the booking was for six, because that's how I put it in the calendar. And thank God on the morning they called and said, you got those four pigs? And we were only able to manage to load three, so it was sort of a happy accident that, uh, despite trying to get four at least, or we actually had four because Ginger went in the trailer and wouldn't leave. But Ginger is Ginger's, our, our, we're our giving lead, Ginger. Yeah, our lead breeding sow, and so and she's not for commercial consumption. So anyway, we we did get three, and I did get them successfully to the slaughterhouse or abattoir or processor, however you want to call it. And, uh, Which yeah. means that we're going to be having um, the pork boxes coming Again, to yeah, In a month or so, we'll have the pork back, with the bacon, and the smoked bits, and yeah, we so can we're light, have, well, we're have light. more pork available. We're a little light on holiday. stock right now, but but we still have pork. So if you're watching this in your local, please come by to the cheese head and pick up the pork. <laughs> yes. And uh, so that sort of took up most of the week, and then it was you were kind of. The bridge. I was working on the bridge the rest of the week and doing bits and pieces and the usual cleaning up and moving things around here and you had a busy week. <laughs> yes, I did have a busy week. So I had my, my usual Monday, Wednesday, Friday cheese making days, but I altered it a little bit of what cheeses I made this week because of where we are in the year. And I say that because this is this conversation is happening in October and this is when I start uh, shifting some of the cheese quantities because we're coming into the holidays when when people start thinking about eating cheese more so i did make opus 42 twice this week yeah. um so I, I have two new customers this week we've got poland provisions which is in poland maine and it's a 
uh, market and a bakery and um, also owned by my yeah. brother and his wife and they have uh, meat and they sell your cheese and uh, it's a great brand new wonderful little market it's really beautiful yeah. and good I think it's gonna be really successful in the location oh I don't think there's anything like that out there either. not really not yeah. my recollection yeah but, and then so. my other new customer this week is black goat test kitchen which is in Warren Maine which is just up the road from here and it's a restaurant that has a small market they moved here um, from the west coast right yeah from oh, the west coast and back. and he had not a while back they're, they're recent transplants a while back okay um <laughs> and they had um um they, they had a restaurant out there they have now have a restaurant here that has a supper club so um in addition to using the the cheese on their menus they're also carrying it in the in the market which is great uh, I shipped cheese to South Carolina, Massachusetts, Tennessee, what was the other one? Oh, and Connecticut this week, so she's Busy shipping week, busy but shipping ramping week. up for the holidays. Yep, um, and I'm pretty sure I'm shipping cheese to Syracuse to a new market uh, this week. We'll check it back in on whether or not that goes out this week. Cool. We'll let you know last week. And then on, on Saturday, I made my biggest cheese graze table ever. It was a hundred person wedding that was held at Maine Maritime Museum. And I had uh, the jig, rockweed, and Opus 42 as the cheeses. And the ricotta spread. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, and then I, I made uh, the savory ricotta spread, which um, because this was, so there are a couple ways of approaching when you're doing a presentation. So if it's here, we're using all of our gugas, you know, our beautiful platters and all those good things. But this was a drop off. So I needed to leave things. So I borrowed some things from the uh, restaurant that was catering the, the dinner and um, then also used very nice disposable things. Um, anyway, so I, I was trying to come up with the best option for the dip and, and it occurred to me that if I roasted a pumpkin, I could use that not only as a vessel, but if anybody got interested, they could also be eating the pumpkin. Um, and, and it looked spectacular. Uh, I also baked uh, two glutts, a savory glut and a sweet glut. And the savory glut was uh, the, the savory with ricotta on the bottom with shard and leeks on top. And then the sweet uh, glut was sweetened with ricotta with apples from the farm. The shard was also here from the farm. And I made those in regular flour and in gluten-free flour. Because <laughs> it turns out it was a mostly gluten-free wedding. Yeah. <laughs> despite you baking all that bread. <laughs> yeah, yes. I also <laughs> baked, baked the bread to go with, with the cheese. And then um, all the vegetables, uh, all the other vegetables and fruits that were out, um, on the graze table were from um, uh, Beth's Farm Market and Schoolhouse Farm, which are two local, local farms. And so the only non-local foods on this incredible spread were the cornichon and the olives. And the meat. Oh, well. Because the, re the, re they, the they, caterer provided They the provided the meat, so. Actually, I don't know its providence. But, and then yesterday, as if that was. As way, if that it, wasn't enough, because that wasn't just, that was also trying to prep all that stuff and make the arrangements with the caterer and get the numbers right around cheese making, around milking cows, around loading pigs with me most of the day on Tuesday, which was exhausting. And then all the pressure and tension of getting it right. Well, and getting and out of here on Saturday when it was pouring rain. Yeah, it wasn't just pouring rain. We it actually- was a, it, was a, it was a deluge. We, no, it was an actual nor'easter, yeah, it turns well, out. Too, but <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it was just hammering down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, then Sunday, and then Sunday, the weather yesterday. cleared and was much like today. And it was Open Creamery Day, which uh, is an annual is annually held on the Sunday of Columbus slash Indigenous Peoples Weekend. Um, and so there are cheesemakers around the state that that uh, open up their their spots for tours and tastings, and and everybody does something different. And uh, so if you didn't get to see it go to any of them in 23. Plan for it in 24. Yeah. And unfortunately, we were so busy getting prepared for it, I took some footage of cleanup and things, but we didn't take any photos or footage of the actual people and the event and stuff. So. Yeah. 
anyway. But that's you okay. Have to believe we, us. we were completely in the moment, and it was the best one we've ever had. It really was. I mean, there weren't the numbers that there have been some years, but it was nice weather. And, and but, well, you see, what I really liked people was... People were really engaged. That's the thing. Yeah, people, people were, were really asking engaged. asking so many questions. I mean, <clears throat> I, I, so what we were trying... So so uh, our assistant uh, was still with us yesterday. Um, and so she, she was keeping on top of restocking the samples and running the cash register. And then we were floating around and answering questions. I was mostly by the creamery answering questions. But and I was showing people the calves and talking about the cows. But there was this moment where I honestly don't even know how it happened that you ended up up with the samples and I ended up down by the calves. And I was down there a long time. I was and upstairs it, a long time. But, but what people happened, kept coming to sample. Well, which is great. Yeah. But the, the, you I did was, have quite a crowd gathered <laughs> around it. And, and, around and they weren't there, right? leaving. And, and, and you and, weren't coming but, up to the but, loft because people were waiting for you up there too. Yeah. And but the thing was, I I wasn't I wasn't just like pontificating or anything. There were all these great questions being asked. People were really interested in in the, the whole picture of here, and that's what we try so hard to do. Is this and is that's kind of what this channel is about. Yeah. Exactly. This is why we're doing. <laughs> Ask this. us questions in the comments below. <laughs> Um, you know, this is a, ho a holistic operation. The grass feeds into the cheese, and the pigs feed into the cheese, honestly. And, yeah. and, and cheese feeds the pigs. And the cheese <laughs> feeds the pigs. Uh, it, it, so it's just, it's so exciting to, it's so often I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm dealing with people in just transactional moments. And so when I have the opportunity to have somebody that's here, that's interested, that's, that's engaged, it just, it, it, it's hard work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And what's on your slate for today? Today's Monday. <laughs> it is Monday. In a, in, a, in a week where time has begun to bend. <laughs> yes. So Days today. Days of the week are irrelevant. So I will be shortly starting to make cheese. Mm -hmm. And I'm making Opus 42 again today. Um, Which is an aged cheese. So yep. It's, it's a long term commitment. <laughs> Just like a long-term relationship. <laughs> ah, ah. No, I was thinking, a cow. What did you say the other day? A cow wasn't just for. Christmas. Oh, cow! Yeah, <laughs> our first cow. We we got as it was. It was just purely by accident that I picked her up on Christmas Eve. So, so my statement is, a cow isn't just for Christmas; it's for life. <laughs> and uh, Opus Forty Two does eventually go away because somebody eats it. <laughs> oh, yeah, but it's it's here for three months minimum. Literally. Aids that cheese. Yeah. Anyway, so I'll be making that today. And I'll also be prepping the cheeses because I already have orders that need to be shipped tomorrow. So I've got a mixture of both wholesale and um, uh, the other one and retail online online orders. That, so I'll prep those today around making cheese. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's all I'm doing today, aside from milking cows mm -hmm. and eating. So uh, he's wonderful <laughs> in many ways, but one is that he does all the cooking for us. So. Um, I don't ever have to think about feeding myself. <laughs> oh, it must be nice. It really is, I have to say. <laughs> You're welcome. So, but but he's like, um, I, what's the word? Um, we eat a lot of the same blob. No, we don't. <clears throat> That's the thing. It's, it's fat, so he'll say to me, we're milking cows. He'll say, so what do you want for dinner? And I'll think. Anything. I, I say, go ahead, honestly ask for anything. And you'll say. <laughs> Something <laughs> like. I don't know. I'm feeling like um, something with fresh vegetables and spice. I will come up with some kind of vegetable curry. Whether we have vegetables or not, <laughs> we've got a vegetarian curry. Yeah. And so it's, it's kind of a, a fun little game. And then other times um, it's like, all right, um, my cheese is running right on schedule and I got started early. So I'm going to need to be able to eat lunch earlier. <laughs> so can you please adjust your schedule and feed me? Yes, that happens. Because yeah. I always have a plan. Yeah, which is nice. And there's leftovers. And there's leftovers. You gotta love leftovers. You gotta love them. Yeah. So, so uh, what's on your agenda for this week? Well, I'm about to leave to go to RZR to pick up more grain for the cows because I haven't finished the cow grain bin. I've got to we'll hopefully finish the bridge. And I'm going to have to start carting silage home because the cows are done in the big field as of today. They've got maybe a day of grazing down below, but the pigs are kind of in the way down there, so I'm not sure how they're going to react. We still haven't caught all the pigs. We're still waiting for one pig 
to come into the new pig area. Okay, wait, not caught, but relocated. So well, caught. But, well, you know. so so there's where the pigs have been living, and then there's this corridor that goes to the the area. The new area the where new we're area. gonna hopefully overwinter, overwinter them. them, and they have to move up this. And all but the boar has made the transition now. But, and he's very reluctant. But here's the thing about this boar. We have tried to send him away to be processed. Multiple for, times. For the last three, no, the last four times. So he's also gotten really big. Um, but but he is um, he is people averse. So we, Wiley. from the time that our pig, pigs are born, because like, we are a pharaoh to finish farm, which means that the pigs are born here and raised here. We are not buying pigs other places and bringing them in. So we're constantly handling them and walking among them and touching them. And I guess that would be the same thing as handling, wouldn't it? Anyway. Not necessarily. <laughs> okay. People handle pigs with sticks and canes and, and oh yeah, good point. Yeah. You know, boards like, you know. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway. So yeah. So we are we are we are hands-on pig farmers. Mm -hmm. um, so they're used to us. But um, every For now some and then. Reason. He just was always sketchy. Yeah, always, and and yeah. and, and and very strong, and um, uh, with a will of his own. With a will of his own. So we yeah. try to work with that, which means all the other pigs are free to come and go to the old pig yard right now in the don't forest, <laughs> which we don't want, and and we're still trying to catch him. So I, I do have to try and manipulate that situation so he. So, because also it's tying up all the fencing resources to create this temporary lane for the pigs and anyway. Yeah. And the cows need to go down in that field just for a little bit before we... And they'll have, so, <coughs> so where that barn. lane is connecting the two areas right now is interrupting the lane where the cows need to be able to go <laughs> in order to go well, They can still go around it, whether they'll want to go around it because they're used to going through that area. Just the cows can adapt. <laughs> The cows and the pigs have been close before, so I don't think there's an issue. Not in a while, though. Well, not since last summer. Yeah. But, so that yeah. means that so I mean, so all the cows, so the heifers that, that are out there. Oh, right. They've never been down yeah. there. They certainly watch the pigs. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. It's, uh, this morning, <laughs> I, I was in the milking parlor. And so when, when I'm in the parlor, I can see through the gate out into the cow congregation area. <laughs> and... And every now and then, what, you'll notice something, right? So I, I'm sitting there milking, and I, I saw movement, and it's because all the cows' heads all pivoted in the same direction. I'm like, okay, what's going on out there? It turns out there were pigs moving around down below. And, and they, they could, could see could, them. They could, one cow who was standing in the right spot could see it, and all the other cows reacted. <laughs> this is a total non sequitur, but it, it, you know how they say that um, when cats see something you know like suddenly do that and you're supposed to like look through their ears and the idea is you can see it goes through the ears of a cat i that never was, heard that oh really i know it's one of those weird things I, so that's I, i'm I, afraid to see what the cows see I sometimes know, that's, yes. yeah. and, well but but you, you have not yet heard um hi there ellie this is ellie's monkey this is the best toy ever um that uh my theory that cows are actually cats and so many of the behaviors of cows are cat-like the fact that they will suddenly be looking so out. The dog's just like a cat too. Though. This dog. You're obsessed with cats. I'm not obsessed with no. This dog is like a cat. This mm. specific. Yes, she is. Cats oh. are quantum ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> she is not. She's a fluffy pup. She is a fluffy pup. Um, let's see. So let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. Thank you. And uh, so we keep an eye out for for shorts. I've got some footage that I've shot of cheese making, which I'm going to load. It can be a little bit tricky because it's warm and steamy in the cheese room and my camera lens keeps fogging up, but I've got some to upload, so just watching out for that. Yeah, and I'll probably release some other, there'll be some footage mixed in here in this episode of the things we did, maybe pig loading, but I've also got tons of footage. <laughs> there'll be some shorts of uh, clearing up the pig area, doing work, collecting firewood, stuff like that. One of the advantages of, of Neil being able to film more often is that he's got machinery he can clamp the thing to. Yeah. <laughs> camera. The thing being <laughs> camera. Anyway. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Cookie Monkey! It's over there, pup. Give.
Give. Ready? And what was really amazing was one of the people who came to Open Creamery Day actually watches the channel. <laughs> so, yes. hi. Hey, hi. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Great. Um, one of the other things on my schedule for this week is an important shipping. Because, so. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, last year, I entered the Rockweed, which is a soft ripened cheese with a ribbon of seaweed in the center. And it won a gold medal at the World Cheese Awards. And, and it's going to Norway to compete again, but this time it's being accompanied by Opus 42. So this week I have to ship it to the consolidation port for all entries that are leaving the United States and going to Norway. And then the judging will be, I think it's the 27th of October. Really? Yeah. Just within this month? Yeah. Your cheese will be in Norway. Wow being eaten by, by an assortment with, of... Along with gate yate yost or whatever the Norwegian cheese is. It's so good. Now I want some of that. I haven't eaten that in ages. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, so so by the, end, uh, by the end of the month, we'll know whether or not um, anything You're is a, happening. A winner. <laughs> I mean, I'm always a winner. Whether the cheese is one. <laughs> and and a pre, uh, apologies to Norwegians for mispronouncing the name of your cheese. <laughs> Good morning. We're just headed down here into the forest to collect the cows for milking. They were out back on grass for the first time in 15 days. I've been feeding them baleage and we are uh, just turning them out back onto the grass a last little bit here at the end of September to get them, uh, get them to finish grazing for the year and then we'll put them uh, in the barn and they'll get baleage for the rest of the winter. But we've got a, a little bit of grass here left, probably 20, 30 days worth uh, of grazing. So hopefully, um, just got to collect them. They're probably down here sleeping. We're a little late for milking, but that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll get it done. Come on, girls. Time to get up. Milking time. Look at you all cozy bedded down here in the forest, huh? All right, these are the littles, the fabulous five. Let's go around here for the milkers. They like to bed down under the trees. I guess it gives them some sh shelter from the dew or something. Come on, Dory. Come on, Lana. Let's go. Everybody up. Milking. Did a fair old number on this paddock everybody's got to get out because we're changing changing sides of the forest come on lottie let's get up ha! oh jesus lottie's been here moved a couple times she's leaking milk come on let's go good girl come on love let's go you too libby let's go everybody up Come on, Mabel. Everybody up, come on. Head to the barn. Come on, up the hill we go, ladies. Libby, get a move on. Come on, we gotta go. Come on, Lana. Libby, come on, ha! get out the gate. Hi, Mr. Spruce. Oh look, here come the little Muppets who stayed behind for milking. 
the dry cows and the bull who don't need to be in the parlor this morning get to graze ahead of everybody. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Come on. Come on through you kids. Come on, Nettle Love. Yay, Nettle. All right, look at that. Kids, grass, grass and grass and more grass. There you go. Well, I'm down here setting up lines in the forest. One thing I'm looking for are uh, black wild cherry shoots, sprouts. Um, in the fall, they're toxic to cows, especially when they wilt. They're high in cyanide, and it takes as little as a cup of leaves to poison them. So there's only a few stumps here. I could have painted them with something. I could have put diesel on them, anything, any toxic thing to kill the... I'm just throwing those over the line. Anything to kill the regrowth on the stump, short of pulling it, uh, which I've done to most of these here. I'm just uh, looking around. I know there's a couple other stumps. In fact, I'm going to go over here right quick and check. Um, there's only about five or six stumps that may regrow. And the more I pick uh, off the leaves, I've done it uh, four times already this summer. The more I pick off the leaves, the less grow back. So hopefully by next season, if I don't get down here and cut them lower, they will have died back and won't be re-sprouting. The rain has stopped. I'm gonna have a quick tidy up for open creamery day out here so people can see inside the windows of the creamery and uh, just get some stuff that's been piled up against the building for a few months now. It's time to go. It's time to start cleaning up for winter. try and wash these windows so that we can actually see inside. That's where the cheese gets made in there. Uh, so I've got to open up the windows and there's a screen on this one. The other ones don't have screens. We're going to wash the windows and vacuum out the screen so the people can actually see inside because uh, it can't actually go inside because it is a food safe uh, sanitary sanitary place. So at least that's clean, that's better. Our dairy inspector will be happy that the junk has moved away from the windows in the front of the creamery. And uh, it is what it is. Creamery? No, these are my retired creamery clogs. Can I have any of this? Oh, Mr. Bucket, let's just. Hacked. 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 Hacked.
the cows. I see the fence, and I think, oh, don't touch that. It's going to shock you. I know. It's hard to get over the fact that it's not on. So today's agrosexual look is hat by Alta Equipment, jacket by JCB, trousers by Engelbert Strauss.